Hi, my name is Michelle Dufresne, and we had a question from Corey on Facebook asking about how I best thought we should organize a classroom library. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So if you're a kindergarten or first grade teacher, you have probably a lot of students that are at very early stages of reading. So that's gonna be a little different than setting up your classroom library if you have a lot of readers in your classroom. I know that a lot of teachers, to help those students, have been creating bins um, based on the guided reading levels. So you might have an A bin, a C bin, a D bin, or maybe you're using reading recovery levels with a one or a two or a three on them. So while that can be really helpful, um, you can direct students to uh, bins where they will find books that they probably will be able to read or will not find as challenging, I can see a growing problem from that approach. I'm seeing kids uh, in classrooms telling me what level reader they are. I have parents um, voicing concern about what level their students are at and telling me what level their students are at. And the leveling system that Fountas and Pinal created or that Marie Clay originally for Reading Recovery created was not for the purpose of helping students uh, select books. And I think it really does a disservice to children to uh, make them feel that they're in a certain level. It creates angst and concern. I do love organizing um, bins by uh, themes or content. So this is a dinosaur book. Students love dinosaurs, animals, um, authors, uh, Junie B. Jones, or uh, Bella and Rosie books. All are ways that you can create uh, bins where students can find books that they're interested in. But that does not get at the issue of helping students find those books that are right for them. So one of the things that uh, with young children, I, I have every student in a classroom have a book box, K1 and 2. And in that box should be a collection of books that they can read. And most of those books, I think, come from guided reading. So when you finish your guided reading lesson, and you've taken your running record with some of your students, then those books would go into their personal book box. But that's not the only way that they can get books. The other way that I give books out to students is sometimes in a whole class setting, I might actually do a little book sharing. So I might have a little pile of books, um, sometimes multiple copies of it, and I'll talk a little bit of it, almost give a mini little book introduction to it, and then say who would like to read it. Everybody raises their hand, they all want to read it, and I pass it out to the students that I know it's going to be right for. The other way that I give books out is at my guided reading lesson. So when I finish up a lesson and I know my students need more books for independent reading time, then I will have a collection of books. Again, I will do a mini book introduction of, if I have multiple copies, this works really well, and I will ask, students to choose a couple to put into their book box. One of the things that I see happening in classrooms is especially with the, um, with the students that are uh, struggling, is children sitting um, at during independent reading time and just flipping through books. They are not reading the books because their basket or their book box or the books piled that they have to read during independent reading are too hard for them to read. Now I'm not against students having a chance to browse books. Um, a chance to look through it, but I think that it is so important for students to have opportunities to read and reread and practice their reading. And what we know is that students that are struggling the most are the ones that do the least amount of reading. So I really think you need to ensure that the books in their book box are books they can read. I also really do prefer, rather than just have students read to themselves, is setting them up with a partner. I like to have mixed ability at partner reading. So they sit shoulder to shoulder. I teach them how to take turns reading. If you have a student that's reading a chapter book, they might read a chapter or part of a chapter. And then the student that has shorter books might read all of the book and they take turns reading them. Um, it's a good thing for both readers. The, both of them get a chance to hear how their reading sounds. It's, it's much more likely that they will read the whole book if they're reading it to somebody else. And it's far less likely that you'll have students just browsing through the books and not reading. So that's one way to really help set up your classroom. 
If you have older students, again, I find that your older students are very much drawn to authors, particularly they love to read series. And so I think setting up lots of boxes that have particular authors that you know uh, the students want to read more of available. Um, I love doing a book talk where I'm basically uh, advertising books for my students to read because I think that sometimes you find that students don't get in there and read enough variety and if they're just going to the shelf and they're seeing leveled leveled books and they think oh I'm just gonna read easy books or oh I'm just gonna read hard books rather than do that I like to have a pile of novels that I'm trying to get them into chapter books that I'm trying to get them into or even picture books available that I talk about and then ask who would like to read it and then you have um, an opportunity to kind of convince those students that only read adventure stories or only read Junie B. Jones stories to try some other things so, Corey, thanks for your question. And if you have questions or other topics that you'd like to hear about, let us know. And thanks for watching. <laughs>